As a free Caucasian woman, it is difficult to fathom the hardship and troubles that an African-American slave woman would have gone through in the 17th and 18th centuries. At the beginning of the 17th century, it was determined that African Americans were a source of cheap and plentiful labor. It's been estimated that six to seven million slaves were exported from Africa during the 18th century. The storage in ships was maximized as African Americans were crammed into every nook and cranny of the ship in order to be efficiently exported to the New World. At first, in the 17th and 18th centuries, slaves worked in large fields growing indigo, rice, and tobacco. When the cotton gin was invented in the late 18th century, most plantations decided to switch from tobacco to cotton. This further increased the apparent need for slaves. During the 17th and 18th centuries, African Americans and white Americans were treated very differently. The following is an account from Harriet Jacobs, a slave, and the writer of Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl. I once saw two beautiful children playing together. One was a fair white child, the other was her slave, and also her sister. When I saw them embracing each other and heard their joyous laughter, I turned sadly away from the lovely sight. I foresaw the inevitable blight that would fall into the little slave's heart. I knew how soon her laughter would be changed to sighs. Slavery was awful. To this day, I cannot fathom the hardships and trouble that enslaved African American women faced almost every day. I cannot imagine facing discrimination rape, and the separation and auctioning of my own family members. But to enslaved African-American women, this is a true and cruel reality. In the novel Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl, Harriet Jacobs recounts her life as an African-American slave. According to Jacobs, men who were slaves had a hard time, but women who were slaves, well, they had an even harder time. Enslaved African-American women faced hardships such as rape and knowing that plantation owners and slave masters often pursued their young slaves. The following is an account from Jacobs. She, meaning young African Americans, will become prematurely knowing in evil things. Soon she will learn to tremble when she hears her master's footfall. She will be compelled to realize that she is no longer a child. If God has bestowed beauty upon her, it will prove her greatest curse. I know that some are too much brutalized by slavery to feel the humiliation of their position, but many slaves feel it most acutely and shrink from the memory of it. I cannot tell how much I suffered in the presence of these wrongs, nor how I am still pained by the retrospect. My master met me at every turn, reminding me that I belonged to him. For years, my master had done his utmost to pollute my mind with foul images. The influences of slavery had had the same effect on me that they had on other young girls. They had made me prematurely knowing concerning the evil ways of the world. Jacobs continues on to compare herself to white women in the 17th and 18th centuries. But O oh, ye happy women, whose purity has been sheltered from childhood, who we have been free to choose the objects of your affection, whose homes are protected by law, do not judge the poor desolate slave girl too severely. If slavery had been abolished, I also could have married the man of my choice. I could have had a home shielded by the laws. But I was struggling alone in the powerful grasp of the demon slavery, and the monster proved too strong for me. Enslaved African American women faced other hardships, such as having their children taken away from them and sold at auction. Harriet Jacobs recounts her memories of auction days. Hiring day at the South takes place on the 1st of January. On the second, the slaves are expected to go to their new masters. On a farm, they work until the corn and cotton are laid. They then have two holidays. Some masters give them a good dinner under the trees. This over, they work until Christmas Eve. If no heavy charges are meantime brought against them, they are given four or five holidays, whichever the master or, or overseer may think proper. At the appointed hour, the grounds are thronged with men, women, and children, waiting like criminals, to hear their doom pronounced. The slave is sure to know who is the most humane or cruel master within forty miles of him. O oh, ye happy free women, contrast your New Year's Day with that of the poor bondwoman. With you, it is a pleasant season, and the light of the day is blessed. Friendly wishes meet you everywhere. Even hearts that have been estranged from you soften at this season, and lips that have been silent echo back. I wish you a happy New Year. 
Children bring their little offerings and raise their rosy lips for a caress. They are your own, and no hand but that of death can take them from you. Discrimination, rape, and separation of family was a normal part of enslaved African Americans' everyday life. Today, that is not typical of my own culture. 